Hi, I'm Shanur Ahmed. Myself and Dr. Backwitz from Wayne State University Medical Center are presenting a short and sweet review of lactate levels, their predictive and prognostic value, and treatment of elevated lactate levels after cardiac surgery. We're happy to be a part of the 8 and 8 series. Under the usual physiologic conditions, glucose, which is the main energy source of cardiac and skeletal muscle, does not produce lactate. However, under anaerobic conditions, such as sepsis and situations of stress, cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle will produce lactate. This is a schematic demonstrating that. Lactate is taken up from the systemic circulation and metabolized in a normally functioning liver to glucose through the quarry cycle. Dysfunction of any of these tissues, either overproduction or reduced clearance, can lead to lactate excess. Clinically, normal lactate concentration is between one to two millimoles per liter, and elevated lactate is greater than three. In cardiac surgery, the normal physiologic circumstances are altered through multiple mechanisms. First, the patient is placed on cardiopulmonary bypass and faces perfusion disturbances to peripheral tissues and hepatosplanchnic circulation. This is due to microcirculatory alterations and shunting, which can result in lactate production. Secondly, under most cardiac operations, a cross clamp is placed on the aorta and cardioplegia is delivered. In a situation of a hypertrophied heart or altered coronary circulation, this results in myocardial ischemia, which can result in lactate excess. A small percentage of cardiac operations is done with circulatory arrest. And whether this is done at 16 degrees or 24 degrees, both situations can lead to regional tissue hypoxia and elevated lactate levels. Thirdly, cardiopulmonary bypass promotes cytokine production, which causes mitochondrial impairment, leading to lactate excess and systemic vasodilatation and a SERS reaction. In addition, Hypotension can occur during cardiopulmonary bypass, in which catecholamines are given to maintain blood pressure, which can cause elevations in lactate. Thus, there can be up to five reasons of lactate excess, perfusion disturbances in peripheral tissues and hepatosplanchnic circulation, myocardial ischemia from aortic cross-clamping and cardioplegia, circulatory arrest, mitochondrial impairment, and catecholamine use. Lactate levels are predictors of outcomes after cardiac surgery. To give you an idea, almost all patients have elevated lactate levels during open heart surgery. Fortunately, the first measured lactate in the ICU is normal, less than three, and 80% of patients who have a mortality of 2%. 18% of patients have lactate levels between three to 10 and have a mortality that ranges between four to 16%. 2% of patients have lactate levels over 10 after cardiac surgery, considered severe hyperlactatemia, and have a mortality of 40%. The causes and percent mortality of patients with severe hyperlactatemia are listed here. The most common causes being cardiogenic shock, septic shock, mesenteric ischemia, and compartment syndrome of the lower extremities. Notice that the mortality is almost 100% when mesenteric ischemia or compartment syndrome is the cause of severe hyperlactatemia. This graph demonstrates the multiple patterns of lactate levels after cardiac surgery, with time zero being returned to the ICU. The first pattern of lactate levels, which is seen in 80% of patients, is normal. This is demonstrated by the blue curve. The second pattern, shown by the red curve, is an elevation of lactate between 0 and 12 hours. The most common causes of this are low cardiac output, hepatic ischemia, SIRS, and catecholamine use. The third pattern, the gray curve, is an elevation of lactate, which occurs between 12 and 24 hours. The most common etiologies of this scenario are prolonged administration of nitroprusside or propofol and sepsis. The fourth and final pattern, the black curve, is a lactate level of, of 10 exiting the operating room. The most common cause of this is extremely low cardiac output. Other contributors to this high lactate can be circulatory arrest, hepatic ischemia, sepsis, SIRS, or any combination of these factors. If the severe hyperlactatemia does not resolve with treatment at 24 hours after operation, further consideration needs to be given to a clinical scenario of mesenteric ischemia or compartment syndrome of the lower extremities. The next slides review the patterns of lactate elevation after cardiac surgery and their respective treatment. The best way to avoid early elevation of lactate is preventative therapy in the operating room by ensuring a cardiac index greater than two liters per minute per meter squared while the patient is on the heart-lung machine. If low cardiac output is an early cause, we manage this by optimizing the patient's preload, heart rate and rhythm, and inotropic support. If the patient does not respond to these interventions, we need to consider an intra-aortic balloon pump or circulatory assist device. 
If hepatic ischemia is an early cause, we manage this by improving cardiac output and rewarming the patient. If our early assessment indicated SIRS, the patient is managed with fluids, vasoactive agents, including levofed, vasopressin, methylene blue, and the newest addition to the armamentarium, angiotensin II. Antibiotics and steroids are also usually administered to these patients in whom this syndrome is suspected. Offending agents such as epinephrine or isoproteranol, which usually cause early hyperlactatemia, can be stopped if clinically suspected. If the time course of lactate elevation is between 12 and 24 hours or intermediate and the cause is sepsis, we treat patients aggressively with IV fluids, antibiotics, and vasoactive drugs. If the cause is believed to be nitroprusside or propofol, these agents can be discontinued. If elevated lactate levels persist more than 24 to 36 hours and the clinical exam is consistent with compartment syndrome or mesenteric ischemia, then surgical intervention should be performed immediately. To highlight all the points of elevated lactate levels and treatment of these levels after cardiac surgery, we present a patient who was successfully treated at our institution. This patient is a 59-year-old male with a history of hepatitis C and IV drug abuse, whose aortic and tricuspid endocarditis was treated with valve replacements. His initial lactate level was 10 when measured on ICU admission. Within 12 hours, his lactate levels increased to 30. His severe hyperlactatemia was due to a combination of cardiogenic shock treated with a balloon pump and ionotropic agents, hepatic insufficiency treated with rewarming, and sepsis treated with fluids, antibiotics, and vasoactive agents. His patient's lactate slowly improved to normal levels by day five in the ICU, and he was eventually discharged to home. This patient is atypical and demonstrates that multiple complicated etiologies of elevated lactate, such as low cardiac output, hepatic insufficiency, and sepsis, can be managed successfully and is not a reason to necessarily throw in the towel. To summarize, lactate production is a consequence of cardiac surgery and cardiopulmonary bypass. The great majority of patients have normal lactate levels postoperatively. Patients with elevated lactate have increased 30-day mortality, and the etiology of elevated lactate should be identified and treated aggressively to ensure the best postoperative outcome. Thank you for your attention.